Good morning, everybody, and welcome <coughs> to today's Daily Energy Markets Forum. Every morning, we take a quick review of uh, oil markets open in Asia, and the news this morning <coughs> is a little bit soft. Again, third day in a row, we're seeing oil prices open downward. Peter McGuire, CEO of XM Australia, I was reviewing your daily note this morning, Peter. You're again uh, drawing our attention to the Fed. It seems like Mr. Powell is talking every week these days. You would think it might be a time for the Fed to actually shut up for a while, but ultimately he is now contending with some new challenges. How do you see his comments this week? Well, good morning, Sean, and good morning, team. Yes, uh, 16 and 17. So we've got uh, blast off today, and then naturally the the 17th St. Patrick's Day. Uh, he'll be able to take us through the market. It'll be quizzed as far as yields. We understand uh, the story, and also his rhetoric as far as his viewpoints moving forward. I still believe that you know, with inflation, it's got to be a concern to someone somewhere. Gasoline prices, as Paul mentioned. What you mentioned as far as crude prices at the moment, up 70% since September, it must affect consumption and uh, all of those inputs. So I think that he's got, to, uh, he's got to play it with a steady hand. It's either going to be uh, some concern as far as tantrums or is he going to uh, you know, upset the marketplace? So very careful rhetoric. I'm conscious as far as equities and US dollar index at the moment, Sean, just under 92. So let's see what uh, Jay Powell's prepared to take us forward with. Peter, do you think the markets will eventually force him into acknowledging some kind of data plot line for rates returning? You would think so, but I'm hearing Janet Yellen. I heard her, she was on CNBC, I think in the last, you know, 12 or 15 hours, I saw an interview, and there, she's certainly not worried about inflation. She's not concerned. It was more or less, you know, oh, we've got the stimulus and it's 1.9 trillion and things are going along very well. And there was certainly no, nothing to draw my attention to it. So maybe they're looking to a different lens. They obviously earn a lot more money than I do. And uh, maybe they're all driving Teslas. So it's no problems and no concerns. But to the man on the street and the woman on the street, I think globally, Sean, higher energy prices are putting a bit of fear into the market. We're expecting in 2021 an increase in about a, a million and a half of new refining capacity in China. Absolutely, Sean. You know, and when you're looking at what we're doing in Australia, we could have done, we're, we're surrounded by oceans. We've got sunshine with some incredible deserts that we could have solar really powering. I reckon we could power Asia. We've got, we're surrounded by natural gas. We've got huge oil reserves. We've got uranium and we've got coal coming out of our ears. Yet we are wanting to shut down refineries and change our whole landscape to a green new energy plan. And uh, I tell you what, I think it's going to have an impact. It'll have an impact. Um, over the next, you know, four to five years, and certainly leading is, forward. Is, from is that do you think uh, being driven, Peter, because of the uh, expansive capacity in China, is sort of scaring Australian refiners away from that investment? I think it's twofold, Sean. I think it's uh, that's the first part of it, of course, and then our, as far as where we sit as on the on the weather front. And with uh, new age energies and what we're what we're having to sign up to, we're just part and parcel of the of the new green deal, and uh, we've got no escape from that, which is very unfortunate for a country like Australia. As I was saying before the show started to Paul and Vandana, we should be really like a Saudi Arabia, with you know everything should be so much cheaper in Australia, and yet we're paying huge prices for energy for electricity all because of, um, you know, trying to kowtow to everyone else. I want to just pick up, uh, Peter, on another article we have in the Digest today, which is regarding um, Biden's China policy uh, uh, likely to be doomed from the start. We saw over the last uh, few days the quadrilateral security dialogue between Australia, India, the US and Japan. Interesting article in the 
Arab News of Saudi Arabia today, which is the leading English language newspaper uh, in Saudi Arabia. Perhaps if this story had been anywhere else, I wouldn't have picked it up. But because it was in the, the largest English language daily of Saudi Arabia, I thought it was added an extra level to the insight, which is basically poo-pooing this quadrilateral arrangement as basically more of the same noise, but no impact in really changing the, the, the sort of curve of China's rise in Asia and the engagement that it has now with the Middle East. Well, yes, and I made reference of that also last week, as far as that $40 billion city uh, uh, being built and constructed on, as we speak in New Guinea. So that creates, again, from the south where we sit geographically, looking up in that Asia pack region and then into Japan, actually, uh, are we a toothless tiger when it looks to, you know, the global dominance that China, Venezuela, Ecuador from energy sides there, it's certainly across the agricultural sector and naturally minerals across Africa, what they're doing with their relationships across all of Asia, Belt and Road across the world. Uh, yeah, they're a, they're a powerhouse and I'm not sure where the next five to 10 years takes us because if you're looking at anything other than, and they've had you know currency manipulation, we're very conscious of that on the big scale of things and that's been talked about for decades. Uh, how do you contain them? Peter, the idea that this second half recovery and we'll see again in the IEA report tomorrow, if they will once again downgrade their demand recovery forecast, which started out a few months ago at six and a half million barrels a day. Now we're down to five and a half million barrels. In order to even get to five and a half million barrels a day on the average across 2021, we'd want to see some pretty bionic demand recovery in Q2. Well, yes, Sean, but I still believe that you possibly might get there because when you're looking at what you, as, as far as GDP numbers across China, what India's forecasting, certainly Asia, then you're looking at South America and the US, um, you might get there. I mean, if, if I look at equity markets, I look at, um, there's a lot of confidence out there, positive sentiment, and that may wash across it, Sean. So I'm not to say that, we're not going to be sitting at, you know, but you wonder if it's handle. already if it's already baked in this oil price. You know, does it does the seventy dollar handle already reflect that expectation, or is there more upward motion if indeed it does transpire, or the opposite, downward motion if it doesn't, Peter? Well, I think first off, if I listen to Yellen and I look at the dot plot moving forward, Sean, that we could be still here in twenty three, going no rate rises yet then I think that that momentum with equity prices, it's a, it's a time for traders to be making money, upward swings. And if you're looking at, at, looking at uh, as far as the crude market, maybe an early 70, 72, 73 handle for Brent, possibly a 69, 70 for WTI over this month. I think that's achievable by Easter. So that positive push up, equity markets continue to rally forward, Sean. So maybe that second quarter is going to shoot the lights out. Thank you very much. We'll wrap it up there, Vandana, uh, Paul and Peter, as we approach our first year anniversary of this Daily Energy Markets Foreign Webinar. It has been an incredible fast 12 months. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. We'll catch up with you in the coming days. All the best. Thank Thanks, you. Sure. Thanks. See you guys.